I have been deeply interested in birds for as long as I can remember. My first memories are of birds, a great blue heron standing in a field, an Allen's hummingbird hovering outside my window, a dark-eyed junco on the monkey bars at my preschool. But over the relatively short span of time during which I've been birding, I have noticed a number of disturbing trends. For example, it used to be easy to find hundreds of red knots, a type of shorebird, at their high tide roosts in Foster City, but this year I have seen only a couple. It turns out that their worldwide populations have been declining at a rate of approximately 25% every three generations. This situation of rapid decline is seen in many other bird species as well. The population of the dark-eyed junco, one of the most abundant species in North America, and also the first bird I identified at age two, has declined by about 170 million since the year 1970. My interest in birds has developed into a concern for their plight and concern for the plights of the trillions of other non-human organisms with whom we share the earth. Too often, humans are spoken of as the antithesis to nature. We are said to be entirely separate from it. Even the term the environment implies something out there separate to us, but that is an utter misconception. We humans are a part of nature, not its opposite. Connection with nature is an intrinsic part of our humanness. Our skyscrapers and our cities are as natural in their ways as a bird's nest or a gopher's burrow. All organisms modify their environment in some way, and in that regard, humanity is no exception. We do tend to modify our environments on a grander scale, though, than birds or gophers, and as we do this, as we go about our daily lives, we cause extreme harm to a great variety of other organisms, our fellow citizens of the Earth. A beaver's modification of its environment, for example, its dam and its pond, has a generally positive effect. It helps to provide habitat for many different species besides the beaver. It helps to prevent floods, it maintains water quality, and so on. Any damage done to trees in the building of the dam is made up for by the permanent source of water that the pond provides to other trees. Most human buildings, however, damage valuable habitat for various species in their construction and do not repay the ecosystem at all. And this damage goes beyond their construction. Nearly a billion migratory birds crash into buildings or wind turbines or power lines and die every year in the United States alone. Such crashes with man-made objects are among the key factors driving the precipitous declines of these species worldwide. But this does not have to be the case. Humans and our modification of the environment need not cause any damage. It is possible for humans and non-human elements of nature to coexist. We can learn how to build buildings that are visible to birds, even those migrating at night. In fact, we already have. We can learn what the most important areas for birds and other organisms are and build our buildings and lay our roads elsewhere. With sufficient information about the needs of non-human species, it is entirely possible for humans peaceably to coexist with all non-human species on the planet. Right now, however, we don't have all the information that we need. There are thousands upon thousands of pieces missing from our picture of how humans and non-human living beings interact. But each and every one of us is capable of filling in some of those missing pieces. We can become citizen scientists. It is remarkably easy to contribute to this process of expanding humanity's understanding of the needs of non-human living beings. One can simply log observations of any animal or plant using apps like eBird and iNaturalist that can be downloaded on an iPhone for free. It is possible to conduct citizen science while walking your dog or looking out of your window. You don't have to be an expert. On iNaturalist, for example, you just post a photograph of a plant or animal and its identity is provided by other users. But every time anybody submits a sighting, whether on iNaturalist or on eBird or on any other platform, missing pieces are filled in. By gathering information about what animals and plants occur where and at what times and under what circumstances, we gain better understanding of these species 
And with that knowledge, when those missing pieces are fitted together, we can work out ways for those species and humans to coexist. If you feel like it, you can go beyond a minute of citizen science per day. You can become a reviewer of observations for a citizen science program working to maintain a high quality data set. Or you can get involved in the analysis of citizen science data. But no matter whether you dedicate your life to it or only contribute to citizen science once a day or once a week or even once a month, the information that you give us is valuable and we need it. So get on out there. Download a citizen science app right away, making use of the speedy Wi-Fi we have here at Sacred Heart and log some sightings. Become involved in any local program that works on developing sustainable ways to coexist with non-human species on planet Earth. You are holding the missing pieces in your hands. Through citizen science, you can fit them together to help complete our bigger picture. Your contribution helps us, it helps other species, it helps the world. Thank you.